So it will be on the on the official server. So far, what I've gathered is uh, it will be on the official server. Uh, they won't. They're not creating a new server because that's costly. They will give more information about details. But in essence, when you start the game, you create a new character. What you have is a an NPC that welcomes you and then can let you join in on uh, the event if you want to. So if you want to participate, you create a new character and you speak to this NPC right here. This NPC, he will give you a certificate of participation. It's a little um, modification that you'll be able to see at the top of your screen. It will, called, it will be called uh, Cursed Shadow. And that's why and that's why the event is called the Cursed Shadow. So as long as you have that alteration at the top of your screen, you are part of the event. So and before, if you want to end before the event, before the event ends, if you want to put a stop to ends, you can talk to another NPC and then you go back to a normal sort of mode and you can carry on playing on the server as normal. Because this is a guild event, there will be an NPC that will allow you to teleport directly into the guild temple so you can create a guild and it will be free and this is why anyone who wants to create a guild will be able to very easily so in order to win the points for events you will have to obligatory be have the uh, curse and be part of a guild so that's what we we're saying earlier for people who have never that don't even know anyone with whom to play in the shadow server or would like to try or would like to find people with whom to participate, we have tried to orient the whole thing or formulate it around guilds so that people who would like to try it uh, and like help can find it because doubly because it's shadow server and also because of the event. I just saw a question uh, related to guilds. There will be a small delay in... You can change guilds at any moment if you join a new one, you can make points for the new guild. However, there will be bonuses that we'll talk about later that you can't recuperate before 72 hours to avoid cheating and... Uh, yeah. Just to end on the NPC. <laughs> Her name will be El Abandon, so Abandon, that you can speak to before the event ends, who will remove the alteration and then your character will return to normal. And the stop will be definitive so if you want to stop please do make sure that you definitely do want to stop so you cannot c carry on the adventure if you speak with that npc so if we stop with a character you can you'll have to recreate a new character and speak with her again and if the character dies you can restart it and then you'll have to speak to the npc again to get the alteration back and if your a character dies in shadow you'll still remain in the guild where you are I'm already seeing smart asses <laughs> you can't XP times 6 will not work for the event <laughs> you anticipate everything chaps <laughs> so the guilds how will they work so the first thing that will be modified for this event and for all servers is the size of guilds that will be modified to go from 250 Oh, from 150 to 250 to 250 350 and it will be retroactive on all guilds all guilds sizes will be modified otherwise it would become a big social group and it is important to us that this social group becomes more consequent much bigger and now when we talk today about alliances who have 250 which was the basis for guilds we are replicating something similar to that and then adding an extra hundred which is a modification we will add and will be added on all servers, not just the uh, shadow, but we have used this as a start, start end point. So anyone in the guild doing the event will have to gain points. So what are they? So all the achievements in the game that are associated to the event will give guild points. They're just score essentially, and there will be a ranking for the guilds. And the idea is to be ahead, really. literally, it's a ranking, so you need to be first. So these are separate um, achievements that are purely for the event, as you can see in the... Um, I don't know if you can see it, let me move. You can see it here. There's a new... Um, within the guild, you should be able to see the score, and on your achievement tab, you should be able to see all the new related achievements to just this event. 
How do you gain guild points? So the pioneer success, we didn't have to wait very long. Let me move it so you can... Uh, one of the one of the achievements we want to keep for good uh, or these type of events that we will add to the game in general and the first one is pioneer so the first person to bring the event to gain the achievement to the guild so there will be new achievements in, uh, to the guild most of them don't even exist in the game at the moment but there, they might be derivatives or similar to the ones that already exist. So the goal will be to be the first one to, to do the achievements so you can bring points to your guild. Knowing that we are in the Shadow Event, death is permanent. So you, there will be a balance to find between getting points for the guild and not dying. So this is the mechanic of the whole event. So the first five people in the server and not just the guild that will bring the points. So guilds will be in competition with each other. So on this very topic, we need to know. The points will be decreasing. So if you see on your guild tab that there is a pioneer success that brings no point, that means the five first uh, spots have been redeemed. There will be many types of pioneer um, achievements for uh, dofuses, uh, professions and quests so I won't spend too much time on this because we'll talk about it later so just wanted to say that the first people the first teams to gain there's a few only of them that can be done solo so for the second slide there will be new successes that are well achievements that can be done solo as opposed to <laughs> and I'm saying no this is not a an Im unemployed uh, kind of event so it's a tryout event Temporal races are for casual people. This looks to be the most try-hard because it covers pretty much everything, so collaboration will be of essence. Leveling, professions, quests, dofuses. Also knowing that there'll be something that will pop up right now. There's also a rush to the dungeons. How will it work? The pioneer successes will... or ach achievements you will have to do as the first uh, ones you need to do in the server so you can get them. And every week... Uh, during Saturday, well, from uh, Friday to Monday, 3 to 3, 3 p.m., a bit larger than the weekend, there's a rusher to the dungeons where we will take all the dungeons in game and just make them uh, give you point guilds. You just need to do them once. So the goal will be the members of any guild work together to do as many dungeons as possible during the weekend so for that you'll have to prepare during the the week and then rush during the weekend to do as many as possible so people even people who have less time or or employed <laughs> are able to participate just by doing dungeons and help your guild during the weekend so the rhythm of the event will be four or five days where you'll do preparation, theory crafting and do pioneer achievements and then two days where you'll have to rush everything and do all the dungeons during the weekend and then re rinse repeat. This is for everyone, yeah that's right. Just to give you a an order of ranking as we've put it on the slides. So about 75% of the points will come from the pioneer achievements. These are estimates, of course, and the rest of the dungeon rushes will be 25, knowing that some uh, pioneer achievements will be really, really hard. I'm going to make a call like we like to do this. If you can make them all, then congrats. Like the Sylvan Dofus, for example. Yeah, really, really hard. So the goal is that everyone tries and targets their own pioneer achievements, but it will be really, really hard to do all of them all at once. Dungeon Rusher will have a big impact as well. And it won't be just the try-harders that will push their guild. They will be moving the needle a lot, but it won't be just them. So if we die, do we lose the points? Yes and no. So the achievement, you have a little chest to recuperate. If you recuperate them, then they are uh, they're, they're confirmed. But if you don't confirm them and then you die, then you've, you've lost them. So you really, really have to recuperate them immediately. So let's say if I die... I've uh, captured the achievement points for the Gobble and I have validated them. Do I get them back again if I create a new account and do them? No, 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 you don't do them. If if it's a different account completely, then yes. But for the Pioneer, it doesn't change anything. 
but for the dungeon rushes over the weekend yeah that's fine if you're really really hard and good and you do the sylvan dofus uh, if you do the sylvan dofus for the first time and you're the pioneer and you do it again after you die and nobody has that in the meantime you do get the point so the guild gains points and if you validate the success or achievement then the guild grabs that point and you keep them and if you uh, take them while you're in a guild then you attribute them to that guild so if you change guilds in the meantime that's how you can't take them with you to the new one or the other one right we have another question what are the rewards now let's look at the restrictions we have a lot of questions that have moved in the chat earlier people who are in the shadow server can easily benefit Oh, they will easily have an advance over everyone else because if you have an, a character level 60 or whatever So there will be an alteration called the cursed shadow that you can see here so this This alteration will uh, differentiate between players who have just started now and people who have been there for ages So because this alteration will apply restrictions. What do we mean by that? <laughs> what do we mean by that? So when we join the event while grouped uh, with other group events during the events we can join their events we can cooperate craft and we can trade that that's all that's all so i want to add something professions we won't be able to use the professions that are already existent in the um, in the server so you'll have to restart the entire profession from scratch while under the effect in order to be able to use them so it is worth it to try it will be interesting for the guild to design or determine someone to do the crafting someone to do the questing it's a cooperation effort really right the second type of restriction these were the hardest ones for us to take on so in order to have an event that would be balanced and equitable for everyone we had to put in place some restrictions and these are restrictions that will uh, prevent people uh, to trade people who are already established before the event who have a lot of wealth we don't want them to benefit and have an advantage over everyone else so we've added a new restriction between existing players and the new one so uh, the moment anyone has that alteration will never be able to trade recuperate or acquire objects that have already been in circulation before the event start so if you've crafted items and you want to just stop during the event you remove the alteration and all those items will be in circulation then and you'd be able to circulate exchange trade with others but you won't be able to join the event again immediately you have to create a new account and I will anticipate uh, this question because I know it will be but the alteration will give you 50,000 pods so you can compensate the uh, chest <laughs> there will be 50,000 extra pods to compensate the the restrictions no death will not be extremely hard because you will have 50,000 pods instead of having a bank you will have uh, you will have uh, oh because you can't use banks and stuff like that you can create five accounts and each one has 50,000 pods and then you can just stack them use characters you can use the other characters you create as a bank in a way or you can hand over the resources to the crafter of your guild so they can keep them for them so they won't be they won't they, the restrictions are made to prevent abuse so you won't be able to trade with banks with uh, haven bags with houses with banks you can't throw anything on the floor you can't recuperate stuff from perceptors you won't have the bonus time six you can't buy from markets so you'll literally have to deal with other people with the alteration that are doing the event so the 50,000 pods is designed to compensate for the harsh restrictions that we have. Resources will be useful. You won't just stack them on the characters because you have nothing. There's no character. Th there's no markets. There's no bank. There's no nothing. <laughs> I need to stop saying Lerov. He says bros because that's what he says all the time in his streams. <laughs> so because there are no markets, no banks, no way to stock anything you only have pods and each other so you will have to give other people um, resources so 
Ah, so the maps where um, if you need to sell stuff with other people doing the event, you'll have to go to the market or the market for that and trade live with people and barter. <laughs> and we want to say that the cameras that you make during the event won't be useful because all you really need is uh, resources, equipment. So you'll have to barter a lot more than buy and sell. And that's what that will be important. You will be able to get cameras. Uh, Cameras are useful still because you can keep them towards the end of the event and maybe towards the event after we're done with it You can use them if you continue playing on the server and if you have the alteration You won't be able to sell your items or anything that you've accumulated in markets But the moment you remove the alteration all the restrictions are gone Between players of the event you can trade as much as you want, but if you don't have the alteration then you can trade with everyone else and you keep everything so you have seen that this is a hardcore try hard mode that's why we have harder stuff but this is what will bring some coherence on the try hard element especially at the guild level you'll have to be uh, you, you'll have to collaborate because you will be competing against other guilds will you trade with them and stuff like that or will you not will you craft for them or will you only craft for your guild and progress faster so and um, the uh, what are they called the colo pebbles you'll have to farm them as well and you can recycle the nuggets and prisms and stuff we also have some other topics that we are fine-tuning the last few details but yeah so uh, for the existing alliances we haven't yet fine-tuned it but we're thinking about it because we want to avoid the situation where they have monopolies and things like that and next on the bonuses topic the idea that we had uh, about that, the idea that we've had. If there are players on the top three, we will give them a little bonus. But for the members of guilds who will not be in the top three, maybe even a bit lower, we don't want them to get discouraged and just... So we will give them a little bonus so they can catch up eventually. And the compromise is to find a good balance between bonuses that would be inter relatively interesting and on the other hand, bonuses that don't bring the whole server out of balance and out of work so to bring those bonuses there will be a new npc it's called el modi he will be in front of the almanax temple he will arrive a few days after the start of the event and he will give you two types of bonuses depending on your position in the ladder the position of your guild in the ladder so the bonus for the top three look like this they are effic uh, efficacy bonuses your guild is well placed if you're top three we will reward you but these are bonuses that only last for 24 hours and you can recuperate Saturday and Sunday T twice you can recuperate and it's always the same bonus for the top three every weekend so the bonus are no more taxes and PV regenerate HP regenerate and there's also a bonus for craft and maging and now if I'm not saying anything nonsense I think it is 10% of of Ah, so you have to, uh, the Almanax bonus is like 10% to recuperate um, stuff. And the region, HP region is... Uh, oh, so HP recuperation is multiplied by 10. And the tax mean uh, zap costs, zappies, anything that uh, where you have to pay your way. So it's like luxury and comfort. And Almanax bonuses will stay, will be applied to people. Like the 10% uh, resource and stuff. And... Uh, this is just to say, if we are in the top three and it's really hard, some guilds in the chat think that once you are in the top three, it gets easier, then maybe these bonuses might be reduced or completely removed if they give an unfair advantage, we feel. I saw this uh, question relating to paddocks. We haven't talked about this yet. If we want to buy, oh, buying a paddock very cheap and then reselling it more expensive if i buy it for one million sell it for 10 and then i have cameras on the event ah such a good question so if you can spot any abuse like that before we even start please make a forum post about it so the goal is we want to make a fair uh, a fair event but we can't think of all the weird peculiar situations that may arise that the example that we brought like that you can buy paddocks Oh, so like for paddocks now we can just block them we're trying to find a solution if we can find one we will implement it if we can't find it we will augment the restrictions we want it to be as uh, enjoyable as possible 
so there are no abuse from commas oh so you can't give your commas to people in the server because you can only trade and craft with people that are playing the event as well i've corrected a bit but there will be a dev blog that will list literally point by point every rule that will be present during the event and on that basis it will be much easier for you but also for us to recuperate all your feedback on the event on that dev, dev blog <laughs> Oh, please put all the abuses on the dev vlog and sorry community managers who will have to deal with it. And also the bonuses for the top 10 guild, outside of the top 10 guilds, we, we have the willingness and the desire to also help um, with um, the fluidity and agility of people that aren't in the top 10. So what we want to give them a little something that they can recuperate every Monday to fr Friday that lasts for 24 hours. It lasts for 24 hours and a bonus that gives them 10% every day for the second week, 15% on the third week and 20% for the fourth, which will allow the guilds who are a bit behind to get progression bonuses uh, where the guilds that are so far ahead will have efficacy and luxury uh, bonuses rather than practical ones that help you progress. Right. Next, this is the mechanic they've talked about, the globes that will be able to drop. So they've added a new type of rare drops. So we know that rare drops are interesting, but we can't add a billion like that on the game without taking up too much time or because it's something you have to think about. So what we have decided to do for this event is to add one item that is called a globe, light globe. It's a consumable that give you an alteration that only lasts for one fight. So these drops, these globes, they are super rare drops on each boss of the game. So in, on every boss of the game, there will be a degree of rarity so from 1 to 10 or 1 to 50 it will be medium rare or very little rare and it, they get up in rarity the, more, the higher the dungeon is so there's a handful of them when you use them they will give you an effect for one fight so there are globes that will give you one ap for the next fight two ap for the next fight there will be others that will give you a buff where if you start your fight lined up with an enemy you get 10% extra damage. There are also others with uh, fixed stats, some with passives. And of course this we will go back on more detail. The presentation of the bonus, no it won't be on the dev block. It's like the achievements. The, the achievement list will not be presented in the dev block. But we will talk about the beta yeah we'll talk about the beta and the beta will give you more practical details maybe one or two examples of uh, the bonus the exo bonuses as i said uh, earlier if you start in line with an enemy you gain 10 percent damage extra if you do a critical ha hit you get five percent of your hp back <laughs> this kind of little passives for one fight and uh, as we there is uh, a lot of achievements that are try hard uh, we talked about doing the Sylvan Dofus in a month, like Eslix pointed out earlier, nobody does that. But if you want to solo it, if you must solo a dungeon like that, it might be interesting to have... Uh, it might be interesting for you to theory craft your fight and stuff with these um, passives. These are not passives that are super insane that will break the game, but it will make things more interesting. Knowing that you can die on the server and the gear will be low end compared to what we have usually because you will still need to craft everything, mage everything. And it will it will remain a rare job, which is uh, extra nice, <laughs> very nice. <laughs> I want to answer a question here, but we can do trade, we can trade, but only with people who are doing the event. Join in groups, join in fights, uh, cooperative crafting will only be done with people who are also doing the event. And the way you do that is by having an alteration. So if someone from the guild that drops the globe, wow, you can trade those as well. So if, if someone drops a globe that gives an interesting buff, you can hand it over to the person that is in charge of the tryhard dungeons and stuff like that, so they can get you points. So, and the alterations will stop after the event. You won't be able to use them outside of having the alteration during the event. Next, we have some uh, some uh, little additions. Uh, wow, we've seen so many people ask this question. So listen, <laughs> what will what should we do? The channel, uh, the event channel. Oh, there's a new channel event. We have added a new channel, the event channel, that will be on the server. It will be impossible to speak on it. However, there will be two messages that will be sent to everyone that have it acti active. 
Uh, it is to warn how uh, it's to warn the entire server that someone has done uh, the pioneer. So Eslex has uh, is the third to have succeeded in doing pioneer royal gobble, and because there can only be five, so everybody will know who the five. So everyone who has an active will be uh, mentioned there. So the person and their guild. And for the second type of message is the death messages. So everyone that is part of the event or more than level 100 will be mentioned if they die. Maybe that's not a good word to use, but they will be made public. Their death will be made public <laughs> and their guild as well. <laughs> yeah, so you can boo them. Ooh, they died. Ooh. So these are the two type of messages that can be sent and nobody will be able to speak on it. Right, and we will see if we can keep this on the server after this. I just want to pick up a question that I've seen 40 times. So the uh, resources will be picked up only by people who are doing the event. Yes, we will have to share resources. You will have to trade with people that are playing against you, essentially. The second edition is the Guild Blastron. So the Guild Blastron is given by El Modi. So the NPC that on the, the tutorial, yeah, yeah, on the tutorial map, we'll give it to everyone who wants to join the event, and you will be able to add it. It's the first cosmetic that you will be have, you will be able to equip, and you will have to play the the event to be able to equip it. It's an exclusive that uh, cosmetic that will take the color of your guild. So everyone who has it will be part of the guild. So you can as a visual element for you to be able to differentiate between people who are doing the shadow as normal and people who are doing the event. So you'll be able to see them. So the red and yellow bit that you can see here in the photo in front of you are the ones that will take uh, the guild colors and it will indicate your belonging to the event and the belonging to the guild, of course. And we said there will be an extra 10 prospection on this plaster to incentivize people to wear them. <laughs> and the last addition will be the guild ladder. Uh. A little technical parenthesis that I was talking about yesterday with Papino, and we've talked about it again this morning, on the API ladder. So it has been redone for Colosseum in December, and so the new guild ladder, who will be created on the Shadow server, will also be based on the same API. It will be released at the same time at the event, and it will allow every guild to be listed with the ranking and guild points. Get the question, you say? The achievements on a shadow are linked to the to the character, not the account. So if you play multiple characters, oh, if you play on your main account, you will be able to get the achievements. You can do achievements in a row, get the rewards, XP, commas and stuff. You so you can you can play with your existing account. There's absolutely no problem there. So let's go back on the rewards to end. It's a very, very long topic, the rewards. So the first thing that we had, the first reflection that we've had, the first idea was to compare this to a Temporis. Because on a Temporis, we are generally very, very, very generous with the rewards. And we reward everyone who have invested a certain amount of time in the game. So there's a lot of people who will get rewards here because uh, this is an event, there will be a ranking of the guild and the people who are at Sunday at 23.59 who will win the top 5. So, unlike our usual way of doing things, there will be one winner. There will be a glory and a reward, but only to a select few. So, the idea was to try and find some sort of different rewards for this event, where we tried to reward people who invest, invested themselves, people who won, but not just to propose a, a, an eternal glory kind of reward, things that last forever. We know that there can be abuses and things like that. And we want to keep it well humored and very good natured. Because this is not accessible to everyone and it's a lot harder, we can allow ourselves to put less rewards because it's not going to touch everyone. There's not going to be as many people you, so you're going to come here to compete and be the best, but that's the target. If you are try harder, the ideal for you is to be a try harder and win. So rewards are secondary. So for the rewards, the first one will be given to everyone that reached level 100. So this will be given automatically. Whenever a person reaches level 100, they will get an exclusive title. So it will be given to everyone. 
and it will be given in parallel as a gift that you can recuperate and then transfer over to, an, to a different server. It will be a gift that can be used in different regular servers. And there will be this plastron, the cosmetic, that will be given to people who participate, but once the event is finished, that 10 prospection bonus will cease. It will close, it ends. But there will be a cosmetic version that will be offered to pretty much everyone to all the guilds who have reached 500,000 points or more in the event. So the people who belong to those guilds will get this, but forever. It might seem like a lot, but you don't know what the values are. You don't know how much you're getting there. So the reality is we needed to find a very good balance for points that we give for small dungeons, but also create some sort of differentiation between getting the Sylvan Dofus and also beating um, Royal Gobble first. So we went from the principle that you needed to do rushers with at least half of your guild and stuff like that, but also do get some really, really difficult ones. So you won't have to win the event fully to win it, but you will have to invest a certain degree to get farm it. So even without doing the Pioneer, without succeeding to, get, to gain Pioneer, you still be able to get this. And you can recuperate this in your normal servers. I think it will be like the title that won't be exchangeable because it's a mark of participation. And the idea is to attest that the character, the, the character, the, the person has reached or has managed to reach that level to have it. So it won't be tradable. And also a title for the top three guilds, all the members of the top three guilds. There will be three different titles. And here we will see the number of the list of members at the end of the event. It won't be automatic. It will be done a few days after the event to all the people who are doing the event from the winning guild. If I can allow myself, the rewards are not at the level of a Temporis because in a Temporis everything is wiped at the end. Here, remember, this is not a temporary thing. You will be able to keep everything, everything that you farmed, everything that you've managed to secure, acquire, accumulate. It will be useful to you. You get to keep in the server. You're not playing for nothing. It's, it's a game. Yeah, it's not a temporis. We're not uh, targeting the same people. We are making a, an event for tryharders, for multi-accounters, and people we touch very less often, that we reach not touch very less often. <laughs> so we made an event that is designed for them, uh, because it affects very few people. So we're trying to target people who don't get much. It's not a temporis. So there will be an extra one month free to all the winning members of the guild and to finish there will be so the idea for this is the people who want to continue the shadow um, event and can be at the top well they can continue their event if they enjoy it and on top of that there will be an interview for the winning guild and we thought we'll try this format the idea is to get well uh, let's contact the, the guild leaders and interview the people of the guild and just see how uh, how was it for them, what they've done differently, and how did they manage their rush to push them forward. It will be a news that will be published on the official website to talk about this and push them forward, give them a bit of fame and exposure. Oh, they're talking about cheating and abuse. We will try everything to make sure there's none, nothing like that, but we also reserve the right to ban people who do cheat. So <laughs> we will see what we can do, huh? Might be the right time to talk about the better now. So, for the better, our point of view on this matter is just give information to everyone. In reality, what we do generally on Temporis is to keep the mystery, to make sure that everybody discovers at the same time what the list of things is. Here, all the information, all the achievements, everything will be posted, will be available on the better. On the better, yeah? And so the list, the points you will get, the list of the globes and how to get them and from where. And we're thinking now about the idea of see how um, how it functions, how it works. How will you anticipate it if you will make some uh, glitches or hacks available? So we put another put another better server. So for five days we will simulate the event, the shadow event, to see what the first five days look like and see how it works. 
So that's how it is. So you'll have access to all this information and you'll be able to prefer to prepare uh, to prepare. So if you want to be one of the first try harders to join the beta, yeah, yeah, of course you can. Yeah, yeah. As a designer, when I've made this concept, I went from the concept from the idea that the anticipation, a try hard event, the theory crafting, everything, the two weeks, the preparation is also part of the event as well as much as the event itself. Some try harders, and I know because I know so many of them, and I am one myself, take so much pleasure to prep the event, get ready for it sometimes more than actually doing it <laughs> yeah we will try and make sure that the repetition the points repetition will be homogeneous and there will be points that will be easier to recuperate as opposed to others especially early on when everybody's starting from scratch so it will be more interesting to go and see the achievements that will make more points and then go and start them because only the first five people will get them Ah, before we go, ah, this is the reward uh, Last is getting. So, would you like to do this now, or so for anyone who has never been on the Shadow server or has been forever, or who have never pushed very far, to get some sort of advice from or some really good tips to better start their adventure, the the traps to avoid and good practices and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm quite recent, I've only been there for a year and some. Some very little tips to start. So you are in XP and uh, drop times three, so you will progress much faster. So it's, it's fine if you have uh, gear level 50 and be level 100, it's not shameful, it's not a problem. And also I've got loads of tips for the actual dungeon themselves. So if you do Nagat, yeah, if you kill all the mobs, you die. Without Without killing the boss, you die. If you do the Ice Dofus uh, quest or the Frigos quest for the beast, if you forget to cast the spell on the. You will one shot all your team. So these are little things that look silly, but they have a big, big, big impact, and lots of people die here. This is from his experience playing Shadow for over a year. So add your tips on the chat. I'm just pulling my phone so I can access. So I can access my notes. This is not a server that looks like Shadow. This will be the Shadow server. It will be an event on the Shadow server. There will be some bosses that one shot. And need to be paid attention. And there's also the... Uh, wh when you're doing uh, jobs and you're... R the resource protectors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. For those who haven't done them, they have been buffed. People who haven't done any professions in a while. Starting from level 20, you can get aggressed, aggroed if you start a fight. So pay attention to those while farming professions. Um, yeah, you can add uh, companions or whatever they call sidekicks in fights like that. So you should be able to uplift your strength by having some help during it. There's also the dimensional... Ah, the dimensional um, uh, bounties. But in dimensions, for example, they are bounties are level 1600 and if you're level 200 then you think you're safe because of the 50 level difference uh, that you might get aggressed and this happens to a lot of people and they get caught by it. Also, avoid, avoid, <laughs> there's a typical reflex before you play on the shadow server is if you fail, if you fail an achievement then you just quit the fight to start again. Don't do that. There's no, there's no again. <laughs> so, Bustache arrives at 85% wisdom, he regens, he removes your MP, so be very very careful, it can be very complicated. Kwakwa, so do not underestimate the early phase dungeons, that's where most people leave the server sadly. <laughs> so it's only people above level 100 that die that will be um, named on uh, that channel. So if you don't know the move of dungeon it can be complicated, so know the boss mechanics, but everything else should be okay. Let's go to a QA and a now, unless you have some other... Uh, if you find any other tips, just uh, stop us and we'll tell them. So if you have any other questions, please put all your questions in the chat. We have tried to answer all the generic questions that we've received, but don't hesitate to put them down.
So don't hesitate to use any sort of resources out there like the offensive that will give you all sorts of values, the vitality, MP, the spells of other mobs that will help you anticipate fights and reduce the likelihood of your diet. We tried to do some modifications as well for the update to avoid the cases where um, unjust, involuntary things where it's unjust. So, for example, you'll be able to use teleportation to leave the crawler of dungeon so you don't have to fight it if you're in that room and get locked. So, I've seen a question. Will there be a slot, an extra slot to... So, you will be using up your character or account slots for every character that you create, so you will be limited in that sense. I don't think you will be able to see on what they died and from which guild, but you won't be able to see where and why, what were the circumstances in which they died, what dungeon and stuff like that. Will we be able to have the area as well? No, 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 I don't think so, no. So just name and the guild. So I've seen this asked a lot. So, so if a leader just kicks everyone from the guild, then tough luck. You won't get the rewards, so you have to choose your guild wisely. <laughs> <laughs> so we've man made the rewards so that they are interesting enough but not too alluring to not bring this kind of behavior where people will start and cheat their guildmates that have put in a lot of work and we'll obviously we will monitor suspicious behavior like this and we will intervene where we see the need to yeah to avoid that adibo they don't want a guild leader to kick everyone and get the rewards on their own well me i won't kick anyone if I'm the leader, of the guild. let's say this uh, word for people who don't necessarily have a guild or no, uh, not anyone on the shadow server. So you will be having your own guild. Uh, yes, I will clearly have my own guild, and we will try so that uh, big heads, big streamers have their own guilds. So we'll be s technically not certain that we won't be kicking anyone, at least on those guilds. And of course, there will be uh, guild rights. Um, a system was put in place also all these rights to kick not kick so it can be managed by the guild leaders to avoid so people with trust can manage these things and make sure there are no abuses happening so this is why we will have safe guilds in a way and trusted ones friendly ones and because of their size is 350 now so you could join a really really good guild and be mm. so the maximum is not 240 so the spots have been increased from 250 to 350 so guilds will be much much larger will it be it will be possible to change guilds at any time you want as we've said earlier knowing that it will be precise on the dev blog if you want to <laughs> sorry if you want to get the rewards from the end of the server you will have to have been in that guild for at least a week to prevent these abuses of no you can't join sunday at 23 the win yeah you can't join the winning guild at midnight or minute before midnight and then get all the rewards <laughs> yeah yeah we should go back on the dates we haven't because we, we've only cursorily mentioned them earlier not this time so this will be a slight spoiler but it should be okay so normally for people who say that the mm, update mm, uh, updates have been spoiled this morning but anyway so on march the 26th we will have the update and the event will start the thursday after this on the 28th it will start on uh, at 2 at 3 p.m but at 3 the moment you create a new account the npc will be there present and you'll be able to start the event. so it will start on the 28th of, of march thursday and it will last 32 days so it ends on a sunday at midnight so if we were to summarize there will be four dungeon rushers there won't be any, the first week there won't be any bonuses or anything, we'll leave people to set up, get settled and start their progression. And then it's from the second week that we will have uh, the rush. So for the first weeks we will be just the setting up and getting used to the event, so the pioneer achievements maybe. Similarly, I have seen this question asked a lot, the Dofus quests on tactical fights, if you die, is you've lost the character. Death. So. Oh, the uh, guardian of um, the guardian of the Pandala uh, bridge. If you get the answer wrong, he doesn't one shot you anymore. He just teleports you far away. And also, there are all the quests where you're meant to die, or uh, designed to not kill you. 
like the ones where you lose your life as part of the guild and ghosts and stuff like that. And he's just naming them like the Leng uh, Spider, whatever. I don't know the names in English. To go to the Koala Cemetery and stuff like that. So all the quests where you die as part of the quest will be designed so that it's not terminal. Also, there's a question about crushing. It's, it's the same. It's absolutely the same. It will be tied to the server as a whole. Whatever percentages you have in the server will affect the event. I want to see people that okay. <laughs> so, the new servers, why we haven't gone with that is because it's too expensive, we'll have to hire external people, and also we want people to have a sort of progression on the server that can carry on. We don't want a new independent server where they will be, and if they want to stop halfway through, they have to start again in Shadow. We just want you to be able to say, nope, stop, speak to an NPC, and then resume your adventure in the Shadow server as normal, no problem. Three French people staring at me with intensity. For those of you that have arrived a little bit after the live, there will be a dev blog that will be published very shortly that will list literally pretty much every question that I have been asked, all the rules, all the points we've mentioned earlier. Maybe even uh, some things that we've forgotten. We forgot to mention, I hope not. <laughs> but there will be the exhaustive list for everything on the dev blog. On the size of the server, it hasn't moved technically. We will have extra machines because uh, we have small machines because now it's not very much populated. But because we anticipate an increase, it will uh, we will ramp up the machine capacity to be similar to the actual servers that we play right now. Yeah, we will have a capacity to make sure that there's not that many people and that it will lag badly. So if you leave your guild, the guild points are attached and tied to the guild. So if you leave, everything that you've won for that guild, just stay for that guild. So if you want to progress, stay with the guild. There is no re-roll in, in essence. If you leave the guild and you start a new... Oh, if you start a new character, there are no more new points to win. Because they're attached to the guild already and they've been claimed. It's his first time, Adibo. Uh, so will you create a guild? Yeah, yeah, I will participate. I'll create my own guild. I hope it won't lag and I will rush on my first week. I will be part of the tryharders, but with four people because I don't trust people. <laughs> no, it, it, there won't be any pre-registration required like the KTA server. You can just log into your shadow server, create an account or a character and get started. He is nervous. It's the first time that Ankama rewards him in this way and they've given him a big podium. How many people are watching the live now on uh, Ankama? I have no idea. 2,000 two, 2, people plus. So, um, uh, there will be three weeks of the beta starting from the 6th of March. We will come back to you about the details, but the idea is not to have the event activated for three weeks on the beta server. It will really, really be to target it towards five days where we'll simulate what it will look like. We will make it accessible for everyone and you can log in and simulate the first four or five days just to get a head start. And then we will see, you, we'll get your feedback, see how it went, and it will allow us to make adjustments uh, for the actual real start of the event. I've seen a little question relating to rare drops that has nothing to do with the <laughs> with the shadow. So I didn't see the question. I'm asking it. <laughs> uh, I'm wondering about a uh, source of compensation like uh, shadow. Uh, cosmetic and things like that. Will there ever be some sort of um, some sort of communication from Akama about the drop rates, where you get from them? So I put them, but I don't remember the drop rates or anything about that. <laughs> as we've said, as we've mentioned it on the change log on this very question in the past, let's just say the drop areas are logical. So in a sense, if I ask you where does the perfid uh, shield drops. It's Count Harvick. No, 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 I'm only kidding. <laughs> Maybe it is a bit more complicated than I expected. No, no, but in reality, we know, we know that uh, uh, the, the shadow is on the mobs, not on the boss. We know that this cosmetic is part of uh, the count. Well, how long has it been? Like, what? Two, two years and a half? I've seen one screenshot in my entire life so far. Well, they, they're rare drops, so they are rare, so it makes sense. So nothing has changed uh, with idols, with, without. It is a fixed drop rate. It, that's not affected by um, by prospection challenges or anything. So the orbs will also function on the same level. 
This has given me an idea about the dream drops in normal official servers. Maybe they work like that. So it's true that they are super, super low, the drop rates. So for the light globes that we have, I think we've put them on 1% drop rate. However, the Vobis, the Paragon, which is a really, really tough item to drop, we've moved to 0.5%, 0.5% on the last September. I think it's 0 0.7, you got it wrong, that one. Yeah. You know, we are lower than Paragon for uh, the rare cosmetic drops like the Shadow Hat and stuff like that. So this is like uh, the old Volbis stuff. Wow, it's like the old Volbis 0 0.001 or something like that. So it's like an old time Volbis but without prospection challenges and anything that affects it. It's super rare, it's designed for it. There's not that many zeros, but it is quite rare. So the idea was to tell ourselves so there will be many people that really, really like and ask for super rare drop of this nature. We spoke to Papino about this just this morning because he had the question asked again. We see them, of course. He answered the question about the Dofuses and for us, these convention uh, event drops, they had a big, big, big value. Uh, like the cards, the all-time cards that we used to give, they used to be sold for exorbitant more exorbitant prices, so we are aware. So the idea was to, we will put them in place, but we will have a very, very low drop rate, and the idea is to, for people who love this, they will put their hand, they will farm it, and people who will find it really hard to get the Shadow Heart for legitimate, in a legitimate way. You'll have to go to the convention and get them. Yeah, we didn't want to depreciate it too much by making it too available. Is there a list of items? I think it was communicated on the change log that was communicated back in December 20 something. Well, yeah. So super rare drops are made available in previous change logs in December of some years ago. I've seen some people talking about organizer, which uh, I know Papino has picked up this question earlier, but I will repeat the same answer that Papino said earlier. We don't caution, don't use any third party software, we don't caution it. And if they, if they independently uh, change the files of the game without you know when you'll get banned and there's nothing we can do about it because we've warned you. Because you can't control third party software and what it does. I have a question for you while you're still both here on my side from chat. We wanted to think from our side about the question of cosmetics on the shadow server because cosmetics cosmetics are objects just like every other objects on the server. When the character dies, he loses everything, including cosmetics. So, which is, uh, let's be frank, a bit dangerous to put cosmetics on the shadow server. So, we wanted to know what your habits are. Do you not put any cosmetics in the shadow servers you put them on uh, the bank and only get them out on special occasions well if they're not lost would that be something that would be interesting for you would it make you want to recuperate them use them show them off there's a message that summarized oh, in the shadow server we're too ugly <laughs> nobody's using skins is it wanted or is it a necessity well, there's some skins that people don't care about losing, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe we could have a poll, maybe in the chat, to see if people want to retain their skins or not. I'm not going to say something that is theoretically possible immediately. So this event allowed us to ask many questions about the Shadow Server, about how it is used, the habits of the players. And this is why I'm using this opportunity to talk about the shadow server and we have some people that listen to us that do play the server and we want to know what their habits are like it's part of the reflections that we have for unity and things like that these are things that we're thinking about from what i'm seeing in the chat people are motivated to keep them they'd really like to keep them be able to use them without worrying about them but here we are <laughs> i think they're realizing it's a lot of work to add stuff like that <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I've missed that. Also, if you if you have uh, the uh, plaster on the guild plaster, and if you create a new account or a character, you'll be able to get a new one on that account, so you don't have to worry about it. What happens with Colosseum in um, what happens in Colosseum in uh, in the shadow? So 
the in Colosseum in the Shadow server, you will f you will face everyone, everyone in this server. It's not just people who are participating, and this is also due to the um, previous success, the hype. So the uh, what do they call the pebbles? Is a thousand, one thousand uh, coins, but here it's just two fifty in the shadow, so it's much easier. So with very few, so in essence, with very few, so you do one Colosseum, you gain one uh, pebble. So in essence, that's how it works. So it is a, a really, really lovely addition. And 700,000 700, camels is much expensive there. So if, if you go... Sorry, I got a bit distracted. Uh, oh, so death, death. So uh, PV, anything to do with 5v5 perceptors, if you do any sort of uh, aggro, bond and brack, you don't die. If you, if you leave against a pooch, you die. <laughs> There's been very f less deaths from pooches compared to last year. So, yeah, so there's this tip that everyone needs to know about. If you give AP to the pooch, he can cast a spell that will one-shot you and you will die forever. <laughs> and stop suiciding, be careful about that. Um, people are still asking about Perceptor fights and stuff. So, the pooch, if you do boost him in AP... Try with a low level account, so. Alright, okay, so you don't die on the map of the push because it's coded that way if you are inside. So the big quest, uh, big quest, quest fights, if you die, you die as well. That's it, it's definitive. I think we have done, we've gone over pretty much all the questions available. From my side, I think it's okay. Do you have anything uh, from your side? If there are any practical questions, like one or two, I want to end on by reminding everyone the dates. So it's from Thursday, the 28th of March, until the Sunday of uh, something April, 28th of April. And there will be a dev blog that will be listed with every possible detail, all the questions. If you have doubts, if you have questions, if you see an abuse or anything like that, that will be the place to go and share it with us, please. So we can centralize everything and get ahead of all the stuff like that and for those who are interested there will be a live that will be specific specific for 271 um, update next week and there we will talk to you about other modifications that will come for the updates for those of you that are interested and we haven't talked about this i don't know if i should uh, restart this subject but there will be twitch drops what? 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 We'll be twist shops for the Ankama lives, the upcoming ones. We will come back on this topic later. <laughs> Between now and uh, the actual event start, we will see. The Ankama live is next week, Art. So if this is all for you, I think, I hope that you will enjoy it. This is the guy who made it. Uh, I really hope that people we are targeting for this will get hyped for it. And as we've said at the beginning of the live, it will not be an event. We didn't want it to be general to please everyone, but it is a target that will be specific and it is an event. If, if it's something that is not really interesting for you, for us it's fine, because uh, the goal is not to uh, incite everyone to participate uh, who will not find themselves or will not enjoy this gameplay. So I think for the design, from a design perspective, we, we want to target smaller niches and give them what they want, then try and cast our net wide because we can't really please everyone and make something that will please nobody at the end. So we find it more interesting to have targeted events that will please the specific target and increase the happiness and overall satisfaction than it is to try something that will please no one. Thank you very much for those last words, brilliant. Thank you last for being here to ask, pick up the questions and present. I hope that this hypes you. 28th of March, 28th of April. Devlog, please come back and give us all your appreciations and we tell you goodbye. Peace. Cool. Right. Peace out, everyone.